Today's video is about prepping up the 140 bumpers for rallying. Um, now a bit of background uh, for posterity in the future. Right now we're in late March 2020 and everyone's in the grip of uh, fear for the coronavirus. And so we have a bit of time on our hands right now to progress some uh, technical bits that we wouldn't ordinarily have time to do. So, big weight in the bumpers is purely this bit of impact rubber here. Um, the bumper itself has got to be one of the lightest on the market, being purely aluminium. Um, and often, also, as these cars hit 50 years old, uh, the uh, fittings are corroding where the ferrous threads meet the aluminium. So, the first thing we do on a rally car is to delete that rubber entirely and simply spray it black so it has a halfway nod to looking standard. What that leaves you with is a whole sequence of holes where this rubber trim was fitted. Let's go and have a look at the one that I've prepped up outside. Okay, so here's a rear bumper. Um, and what you can see is the two main fixing bolts to the car. But then you can see two, four, six, eight, 10, 20. Then you can see 22 of the fixing holes for the rubber, um, which once it's sprayed will look pretty naff. Um, also note where the salt water has sat over winters we also get a load of oxide sadly building up particularly on the bottom edge um, so i've already gone through and started trying to clean these back beyond the oxide um, that one these two are slightly nasty they're going to be really hard work uh, but i've taken it back to a little bit of thickness of metal so i think i can do that um, and we start basically TIG welding them. Okay, bit of acetone. And I just clamp a little bit of stainless steel behind it. There we go. Five percent silicon rod. Warm up the metal a little bit as I gather my wits. And in we go. Off with the stainless, and there is the back weld. And if you look at the front, it's going to be fairly messy. There's the front weld. There, so I'm just going to go over the top of this one just to um, actually, that's the best one I've done so far, to be honest. But I'm just going to fill out a bit where it's dipped a little.
There we go. That's welded in. And the back view. So we'll just continue like that and um, I'll show you in an hour or so the end product. Talk to you then. Okay, one hour later and we're done. Um, let's uh, zoom in a bit and see, see how it looks. So some of these have come on really nicely. Like if you look at that one and that one, they've gone on really neatly, this one and this one, this one and this one. But then, predictably, when we get to the thin metal, it gets a little bit messy, really. That one's messy, that one's messy, that one's adequate, and that one's adequate. Um, at the back of it, well, some of them are really quite nice, actually. Yeah, look at those. Uh, and then we get to the messy ones. The well, bit of an excess of material. But to be honest, I'm a bit of a novice. And I'm actually very pleased with that because we've been dealing with fairly dirty aluminium that's difficult to clean. Um, so I have given myself the possibly the hardest task of learning how to do this. Um, and yet, I reckon we've done a halfway decent job. So I'm now going to um, dress these now. So there we go, there's our dressed bumper. Um, bit of a small hole there, a couple of shallows here and there. But to be honest, I think when Nigel puts a lick of um, high build undercoat on it, um, I think most of that will disappear. Uh, yeah, the corners have worked fairly well there and there, which of course were the difficult ones. They were the ones where the metal had gone very thin. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. Um, yeah, okay, don't look too carefully at that. But to be honest, for an amateur, that's not that bad. In the meantime, for those of you who might be wanting to do your own TIG, let's just go and have a look at the setup I used for this. So my filler rod was 5% silicon. Um, so that's my filler rod. That worked very nicely. Uh, this is a 26 torch using a seven ceramic, number seven ceramic. And the electrode is zirconated um, 2.4 mil. And I set my, my pure argon gas at 17 CFH. Possibly a little high that. Um, you could perhaps turn that down a little bit, but 17 CFH on that. And let's have a look at anything we can see interesting on my setup. Yeah, peak current's at about 150. Um, basic current wound up. Uh, uh, pulse frequency is set at what appears to be um, probably about 80 hertz, I think. Um, can't quite tell on that gauge. And my clean area, I dropped down to uh, 40%. Um, we were running at 50% there and I dropped it down to 40%. A little bit of gas after flow, but not much. Um, obviously on AC. And there we go. That is my configuration uh, for anyone who wants to know. And in case you hadn't guessed, that's so I can remember next time I come back to it, I can just set it up using my video. Now, since one can never be too obsessional about weight reduction in a competition car, I am half considering going down the under edge here and drilling um, with my hole cutter and making holes down the whole underside. Am I going to do that? I don't know. Kind of sounds cute, doesn't it? Um, I might do that. Anyway, uh, you'll see the final product here on the video about the 142 final build. Um, so uh, I'll leave this video at 
the point we send it away to Nigel for spraying up. Yep, very good. Uh, thank you for watching. See you later.